So that's what we're gonna be doing in this video. You are gonna get the, the raw, honest truth about if I really feel like I am greater than Bikowski. Hello everybody and welcome to this video. The reason why I'm doing this video is because something came up last week or earlier this week, I can't really remember now, um, where I posted a video, and I've been working on thumbnails and trying to get like a better thumbnail game going, you know. But I got a comment from David Novak, and I will post it somewhere up here um, on the video called Compare. The comment was, you know, because you had this pick of you and Bukowski, it was kind of misleading, and I thought I was gonna get some Bukowski shit with you. So I explained, I'm like, oh, well, yeah, I was just saying, like, if I were to compare myself to someone, um, and since I've been doing a lot of videos about him lately, like, I could, like, compare myself to him if that was something I was gonna do. But, um, since he said that, I was like, well, shit, why don't I fucking compare myself to Bukowski and see how I hold up? In order to make this work correctly, I think I need to start at the beginning with me and him. And a lot of you have probably heard this story before. But back in, I had always known of Bukowski, but I hadn't read him before. The deal with Bukowski, um, I, in 2012, I think 2012, I started, um, I was slowing down on making movies. Um, I was making maybe eight to ten movies a year. I had heard about ebooks and Kindle. And so I'm like, fuck it, I'll just take a bunch of short stories that I've been writing over the years and start putting those out. So I put out um, Unsane Sam, uh, Killing a B3, Anxious Anxiety, uh, Bacon, Gonorrhea. I think the roommate, the roommate might have only been in the collection. I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, but so I put those out and I was putting them out every week. Oh, and free Kindle books. That was the new one I wrote, which did really well because of SEO. Hell yeah. All this stuff was going really, really well. And I started getting reviews and comments. And the two things people said that kept coming up was that it was very reminiscent of Bukowski and very reminiscent of Chuck Palnick, I think is how you say his name. I always fuck that up. And I hadn't read either one of those guys. Like, my big influences for my short stories were Kurt Vonnegut and uh, William S. Burroughs and Hunter S. Thompson. Like, those were, like, my three... Like big influences or whatever. So I was like shocked because I'm like, oh, these guys write like I write? That's fucking cool. So I checked both of them out. And the funny thing was, was I checked uh, Paul Nick out first um, because I just, I didn't think I would like Bukowski. I just, I'm like, oh, so he like writes poems and novels, but, like, his poems aren't gothic, like, that's weird. I read some Polnick stuff, and I just, I felt like there was no heart in it. And I felt like the stuff I wrote, even though it was weird and creepy and disgusting and all that shit, I felt like there was, like, heart in my soul being, like, pushed out through my stuff. Where his stuff, I felt, just was, like, gross for the sake of being gross. And he's a very cold writer. Like, he doesn't have, uh, 
it, it, there's just no warmth to it at all. And I felt he, even in his self-deprecating shit, takes himself way too seriously. So I was like not into him from that. So when I started Bukowski, I was in, I was about to start writing the serialized version of the Black Star books. Like I do with everybody, if I start reading somebody, I start from as close to the beginning as I can, and then work my way out. And so I picked up Post Office, and I think I should have picked up his short stories, even though um, his novels read like chapters of short stories, so it's fine. But I picked up Post Office, and just that opening line, you know, um, it's something along the lines of, um, it began as a mistake, and that was the entire first paragraph. It began as a mistake, that's it. And I was just like, fuck yes, dude. Like, this, I can't do get on board with. And I know that sounds kind of stupid, that just one sentence made me feel like connected with somebody, but it's the fucking truth, dude. It began as a mistake, and I'm like, yes, I can do that. Post Office totally kept me engrossed, and I feel like if I would have read his short stories first, I don't know if I would have liked Post Office as much, because Post Office is good, but it's not as exciting as a bunch of his other stuff. And, well, anyway, as far as the novel goes, like, I don't think my novels t were anything like his because I've only written genre novels. I've never written a novel that is like that, you know? I think the closest thing I have to that is Horrywood, but I stopped writing it because I didn't like how the Kindle Bella payout thing was, so that's another thing for another day. Um, I'm hoping, actually, in the fall that um, I'll have that book out, so we'll see how that goes. I want to say I read Tales of Ordinary Madness. No, I read South of No North. And in his short stories, I could see where people would go, oh shit, your short stories are a lot like his. But I think he is better at the short story than I am. Um, his asides are better. They're, they're just better because I feel like my like rabbit trail brain shit in my short stories works really well. And that's very much me. Like, I would never change my style. But I feel like when he does his asides, it's better than when I do my asides, if that makes any sense. And then I didn't start reading his poetry until after I had been back into writing poetry. And I've talked about this a hundred fucking times. So, this is where the comparisons are going to start. And we're going to find out, like, who's better, who's worse. His very early poetry, I think my poetry is miles better than his. His very, very early stuff, I think, is him just trying to find himself. It's, like, pretentious for pretentious sake. And it's just not, I don't know, it, it just, it doesn't resonate with me at all. His stuff, and this is like, I'm talking like pre, I don't know, pre-1965, I think my stuff is better than his. From like 1965 to 1978, I would say there's moments where he shines, but I still feel like my stuff's better than his. Well, I don't know, like, when he tries to impress people with his vast knowledge of things, I think he fails. Because he goes from being this, like, badass, fucking, like, doesn't give a fuck motherfucker, to suddenly, like, trying really hard. And I don't dig 
make that try hard shit. Make, I never have, and even when I didn't realize that's what I was looking for, I knew there were things off. And a lot of people are probably going to argue that with me and say that's bullshit, whatever. So I don't give a shit. I really don't care. His stuff in the 80s. Now, this. This is where I feel like... For sure, like his stuff, I haven't been able to hit that yet. Like as far as comparison goes, I feel like he wins at that moment. When he realizes that he doesn't have to suck up anymore and he just lets himself write, I feel like he just nails it out of the park. I feel like I have moments of that greatness, but I don't know if I have it all the time. And it's not something I necessarily think about, but like I was putting together um, my July chapbook, and my July chapbook is going to be um, Drinking Less, and it is a chapbook I put together using the Endless Poem workshop that I do. And I think it's probably the best written shit I've ever done. And when I was writing that stuff, I didn't think about it like that because I didn't have time to because it was like 10 minutes, 5 minutes, go, 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 whatever. And then, like, I was reading it last night when I was formatting it and I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, this is really powerful shit. Okay, so I don't want to say it's better than anything Bukowski ever did, but I kind of feel like it's better than anything Bukowski ever did. The difference between my early shit, and when I say early shit, I mean like 2016 early shit, to now, is I have gotten really heavy in oversimplification of lines. And the funny thing is, that's something that Bukowski always says that he does, but I don't think he really does it. I just feel like my shit is so stripped down to the lowest common denominator that um, I don't think he ever really did that, at least the way I do it. So in that sense, I feel like my stuff is better than Bukowski's for sure. Now, there comes a point in Bukowski's career where... Um, he's getting older and after his tuberculosis so I would say uh, the last night of the earth poems and beyond until his death the stuff he wrote during that period I think is more meaningful than most of the stuff I've written but I feel like the poems themselves mine are better and I think that just has to do with where one is at you know like he was burying his fucking soul his later poems I think are the closest thing to like personal enlightenment if that makes any sense his soul is on that page the poems themselves might not be that good but his, like, heart is, like, gushing on the page. And um, he has absolutely nothing to hide at that point. He's succeeded in life. He knows who he is. He's accepted the fact. And now he knows he's going to die. Like, you can't get more open than that. As far as do I think I'm better, I think I'm better than Bukowski um, 75% of the time. I think there's times when he shines. So with that said, a lot of you might be going, you are kind of fooling yourself if you think you're fucking better than Bukowski and all this other shit. That's fine, whatever. But here's the fucking thing, dude. You have to kill your idols. Gods are meant to be brought down. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Like, you are always going to live in the shadow of someone else until you knock that person down. And I decided 
a while back that I'm not going to be in anyone's shadow ever again. And when I said that to myself, when I said, like, I am the best at what I do, nobody touches me, no matter who you fucking are. When I said that, the quality of my work exploded. Like, I don't know uh, another way of making that make sense, but my work exploded like leaps and bounds. And I would say probably that was roughly, I still think I wrote some great poems in like the end of everything and shit like that. But I would say probably Pharma Phoenix Rises, period. That's when I was like, nobody can touch me. And that I am better than Bukowski and better than Blazik and ble better than Tchaikovsky. You know, like I just, I really felt good. Every day that goes by that I'm writing, it just, like, I hit that home more. Drinking less. So I wrote all those poems in, like, one, like, two hour or an hour and a half um, session. I haven't really read those poems back since I wrote those poems. You have to kill your idols. And the only way you can kill an idol is by doing something better than them, you know? Like, what, what is it, that Dostoevsky thing? Like, every, every man dreams of killing his father, you know? Like, I killed my father. I killed my poetry daddy. And um, I'm fucking better than him. <laughs> uh... I still love it, but I'm better. And that's okay. <clears throat> so anyway, I hope you found this useful. And hopefully that isn't clickbaity anymore. And I'm going to try harder on making sure my thumbnails say exactly what they're supposed to say. Kill your idols, and I will talk to you all later. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.